What's up guys, it's Mr. Slin. I know it's been a while since I put my last video out there, but I decided I'd make another one for you. So without further ado, here's another game of Risk. Enjoy. Yeah, what happened to me? Um, so basically I was making a lot of YouTube videos and I was streaming on Twitch and then I kind of burned myself out, which is for those of you guys who've known me for many years, like this is something that happens to me all the time. Uh, this is not the first time I burned myself out making content whoa dude new graphics okay and it looks like they got rid of some of those options that were there before whoa sound effects okay how do i turn these off these these are actually kind of annoying but uh can i see the other players skill levels at least so this guy's got 32 hours played this guy's got five hours played there's me of course and then red has 211 hours played so red's the best player of our opponents so so far white has been attacking australia and then pink has been in the middle of the board my strategy this game i haven't really thought about it yet let me look at the board here because if white's going for australia the other place that white is located is south america which means i could go for south america but there's just so much pink surrounding me it makes me a little bit nervous if i look at where i have the most troops on the board it's right here in the middle so I think I might just play in the middle for a little bit, just to, just until I figure out what the heck is going on with this board. So I think what I'll do is I'll take my, I want to get away from the six and three. It's a little bit scary to me. I'm going to go up to the right. I'll probably go, I think I'm going to go, uh, okay. Tap any of your territories to begin deploying troops. Next phase. Okay. This is, this is weird. I, I wonder if I have like tutorials turned on or something. Okay. Now I end my attack phase. And now I fortify. I'm going to bring the two down to the four just so I don't lose it. Or should I bring the four up? I don't think he's going to attack the four. So let's bring the two down. Yeah, I wonder if I have tutorials turned on. Let me see. Phase change animation. I think that's what I want to turn off. Turn info notification. Yeah, I don't want that either. I just want to play normal risk with no tutorials. <laughs> okay, so it's red's turn. If you were red, what would you do? I mean, red's got nothing in the bottom of the board. All their units are in the top of the board, the top half of the board, which puts them in an awkward position. They have to go after one of these harder to take continents. Looks like red is going for North America. They're kind of evacuating Eastern Asia and migrating all the units into North America here. And that's what I was saying is like, they don't have anything in the, in the Southern half of the board. They got everything in the Northern half of the board. And so they're gonna have to go after like North America. It's a very difficult continent to take. We'll see how that plays out though. White is gonna finish Australia, no surprise there. And pink is probably going for Africa, but I wanna wait one more turn to finalize my read. Uh, they've got most of their units in Africa. They've got some stuff here in North America that might slow red down, but I don't think they're gonna fight red for that. And then they've got the stuff in Europe that I can kind of eventually take over. So over the next few turns, I'm gonna move more of my units up into Europe. I need to get this five out of Africa, but this three is blocking. But if I could just get through here for free and move my five out, that'll kind of remove me from having a conflict with pink and get me into get me to save these five units. I'm going to try and ask pink for an alliance and see if we can ally. I'm going to ask white for one as well. I might as well ask red. I'll ask everybody for an alliance, see who decides to ally with me. All right, pink's turn. This is the turn that we've been eagerly awaiting. I did ask everybody on the board for an alliance and nobody accepted. I'm also noticing that my opponents are not super highly skilled. I think it's because I don't have a rating right now. All right, it looks like pink is getting out of the way of my five, so maybe my five can make it out. Yes. Nice, nice, really nice. All right, that's perfect. So I'll take that eight. I'll attack here. And then I'll move my seven over into... I guess I want to strengthen this four for now, just to make sure he doesn't attack it. I probably should have moved it up to the five, just to show that I'm non-hostile and he probably will not attack my four, but I was thinking maybe this guy's a newer player, he's only got five hours, he might attack my four. So I thought to play it safe, I'm going to beef this up, but I think against the higher skilled player, I would have moved it like further away. Just to show that I don't have any intention of attacking Africa. Already I'm showing that I'm not attacking Africa by moving my units out. 
but anyways it's this this is a, a tangent this is like not that important in the grand scheme of things the other thing i'm thinking about right now is that i want to save my three if i can but there's so many units in the way like i, I gotta break through this four if i can make it into southern europe with the three i could save a couple units there that'd be nice but not super critical did white leave the game yes it says white is offline right now underneath my face so it looks like white left the game if white leaves the game i could theoretically take my 10 and attack australia guaranteeing myself a continent which works if white doesn't decide to rejoin the game but if white does decide to rejoin the game they might get pissed off at me that i took their continent while they were disconnected we'll see i don't know what the disconnect rules are anymore if they change those at all we'll see awesome to hear your commentary again you're one of my favorites to watch when i first started playing hey that's nice of you to say okay my turn. And yeah, this is kind of the key decision point. Do I go for Australia or not? Red accepted my alliance and they're still going for North America. So they're absolutely no threat to me. I could still go for Europe. That was kind of my plan all along. And there's a chance that white reconnects to this game. If I go to war with white, I mean, I definitely have enough units to do it. I can bring the five and the four into Australia. Like there's a lot of good things going for me if I decide to go for Australia right now. But on the other hand, I don't know if white's going to reconnect and i think the safer thing to do is just to go with my original game plan which is just to go towards europe so let's let's play it safe i think okay i just made my move but in hindsight what i could have done was move this way instead and keep fortifying middle east i know it puts pressure on pink but it stacks this up into like a 20 and the 20 still has the optionality to attack Australia. Right now, by attacking Ukraine, and now I have this wall, my 15 can no longer attack Australia. So I, don't, I no longer have the option to attack Australia. So in hindsight, I should have left that option open. Just in case white never reconnects, maybe I just take Australia. So right now, look, it's looking like white has not reconnected the game yet. There goes my three that I was trying to save. The computer tends to attack haphazardly. I don't know if they've improved the AI, <laughs> but right now it's looking like the AI is just evacuating Australia. So I think I might just go for it if I get a turn in. I do not have a turn in though. Maybe I'll bring my five over on this turn. Maybe I'll start stacking into the... Ah, uh, 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 hmm. I want to bring the five into the five, but at the same time, I need to make this a 20 so I can go down into Australia. But I'll probably still have the option to bring my 5 in later on. Worst case scenario, the 5 gets stranded. It's not a big deal. Alright. Oh, the 15 is open. It's open. The door's there. Ooh, now pink has 4 cards, so I don't know what pink is going to do yet. I think I need to wait one more turn to see what pink does. Or should I just go for it? it this would be so much better if I had a turn in. The safe thing to do is to not go for it yet. All right, I'm going to bring my five over to the right. Now, I know what you're saying. You might be thinking, hey, Slyn, you, had, you have a plus two on Great Britain, meaning if you turn in the Great Britain, you get plus two. Why did you use that five and not the other five? And I'm worried that this five gets stranded and then never gets to rejoin my army. And it's way more important for me to get my army joined up so that if I do go for Australia, this five is way easier to bring in later on but this five might get stranded so i'm willing to give up that plus two like let's say that computer or red or somebody attacks that I, I'm, I'm willing to give that up in order to make sure i keep my five with the rest of my army that's my thought process okay now if i was red i would probably go for south america but <laughs> red is very intent on going for north america here nice big and stacked army Pink is moments away from taking Africa. I think people might be knowing that I'm going for Australia. At this point, white has not reconnected to the game, so I'm inclined to go for Australia at this point. It's just a guaranteed continent, much safer. And look at the computer just completely evacuated Australia. I mean, this is free as hell. So I think, I think we got to go for Australia here. Plus, I'm perfectly stacked up for it. I can just take it down, bring the 20 onto Siam. 
Now the question is, do I use my three cannon turn in now or later? It's a little bit painful to me because Siam in Western Australia for those plus twos. Plus, if I just wait one more turn, maybe I get an infantry and make it a better turn in. But I'm I'm thinking I gotta use the turn in here to guarantee that pink doesn't retaliate to me on me as soon as I take Australia. Okay, now on the bright side, pink did use their turn in on this turn. So it's likely they do not attack me as I take Australia. Especially if they're stacking North Africa, then the seven will not be able to attack me. And I could maybe hold out. Yeah, I mean, these are just some... Let's see where this 14 is fortifies. If it fortifies to Eastern Africa, then I need to use my turn in. Or actually, I don't. I could use my five. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah, the 11 is technically an attacking position. Let's see. This will be a 23, and it's going to cost me... One, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 23 minus nine is 14. 14 does hold up against an 11, but I think if I want to be truly safe, I think I'll just use my turn in. I, I, I'm, I'm playing a pretty conservative game here. Let's just do it right. What if I just I am? And now we're good. And it's good to do it on this turn because White, the computer player, was about to get five cards here and then do a turn in and might reinforce Australia. I know they haven't been this whole game, but anyways, I think we're in a really good position. It's nice taking the lower, the southern um, continents because they're just a lot easier to take. Um, see, like we've, we took that very easily, whereas Red's still working on North America. So just going for those free and easy southern Continent as opposed to something more difficult like Europe, which would be harder to take and hold on to. And it keeps me in line with pink. Like we're we're on, we're at the same size at this point. Now red is the biggest threat human player on the board. Not only did we see that red had the most hours played, but red also has the biggest continent. So as we're looking at this board, we gotta be a little bit worried about red. Now, luckily, red is in an alliance with us. I wish pink would be in an alliance with us too. That'd make me feel a little bit better about teaming up with pink to take down red. And I haven't seen any indication from pink yet that pink is going to stop red from doing this. But let's, let's watch and see. What we'd like to see happen is the computer player attacking Mexico and the pink player maybe pushing their way up into Greenland. That's what we'd like to see. Not sure if we're going to see it. Now this 20 can attack up into the right into Alaska. So even no matter what I do, I should not attack China because I want to leave that 20 with the option of attacking North America. I would love to bring this five down, but he killed my bridge. I was gonna bring the five around this way. Now, and I can't attack through China. Like I said, I'll cut off my 20. Now, Pink did have an opportunity to attack Greenland and he didn't. So the question is, should I attack Alaska? And that's just, even though red is ahead, I don't want to go to war with anybody yet. The, the troop counts are still very even. I feel good about the situation. I think I'm just going to, uh, I think I'm just going to wait. Now, the reason I'm attacking white is because it's a very neutral attack. Um, I'm not attacking any other players and pissing them off. But the other thing I'm trying to do is push white out of Asia so that they keep spawning units in South America, thereby putting pressure on Mexico. So the way that the computer works is that they're just going to spawn units wherever they have their territories, right? I mean, if we just start pushing them out, they're not really going to fight back. Hopefully they just keep buffing up Venezuela and then eventually it'll attack Mexico. That's my, that's my thought process. I would love this four to rejoin the 25. I just don't see a clean way of doing it because I'd have to buff this, attack this, merge, and then the four is still stranded. I could leave a five on Middle East, but then he might attack with the 11. I just don't want to lose units to pink right now. Three horses, but the plus two makes it eight. It's not terrible, not amazing. And I lost Great Britain, so that's just one less reason for me to do anything there. Hey, Mr. Slyn, I haven't seen any of your YouTube videos lately. I miss you. Yeah, thanks. I missed you guys too. I'm... I'm... Hopefully we get some good games tonight and I can put something up on YouTube. 
It'd be fun to put up my first game back on YouTube, right? Let's try and make this a win. Right now, it's not looking that great for me, though. I mean, I have the least number of units on the entire board. The one thing that's that I have going for me is that I'm completely turtled up here in Siam. So that that's that's good for me. But I have the weakest of the three continents from all the human players. I mean, this guy's getting five units per turn. This guy's getting three units per turn. I'm only getting two units per turn. So I'm definitely in a weaker position. And I don't like it. <laughs> but what can I do about it right now? I wish Pink would team up with me, but they haven't. And I don't have that um, Great Britain anymore, so I've lost that incentive to do that turn. And I could take Yakutsk here. I think I'm going to do that. Now, the question I should ask myself is, can anybody attack my 25? And because of this wall, he cannot attack to the 25, and neither can Red. Because of the 6 is too small. So I'm not in danger of getting attacked. That's why I feel comfortable putting a couple units over here in Siberia and using it to take um, Yakutsk for the, for the bonus. So I'm going to try and hold on to this for that plus two that I get right here. And if I can get a cannon on the next turn, then that'll make it a really nice 12 unit turn in. Yeah, um, your question right now is like, sh should I stay here or should I try and switch the board up because I'm, I'm in the worst position? That's a really great question because I am in the worst position. But because there's a couple other players on the board, I know one of them's a computer, but because there's a couple other players on the board, I don't feel like I'm falling that far behind in comparison to Red. I probably am. Like if you look at it, Red has um, 24 units more than me. Now, I do have three cards, and each card is worth about three units, so that's nine. So, I mean, I'm, I'm probably, like, what, like, 13 units behind or something like that? Like, 15 units behind? So, I am behind for sure. Um, but I don't think I can single-handedly change the state of the board at this point. Like, if I take this 28 and I go bash Alaska, that 26 is going to retaliate and make my life really, really painful. So it's just not that great a situation for me. One thing that's really hurting me, though, is that Pink seems to be going after me pretty hard and has not accepted my alliance request. So I don't feel great about the current situation. I guess what I'm trying to say is that like Red has no incentive to change the board state because they got the best production. So the longer the game goes, the better it is for Red. Pink is in second place, so they don't have much incentive either. So I'm definitely in the long run like if you were to take this game and multiply it by a thousand turns i would definitely be in last place falling behind no doubt about it so i'm hoping that the white computer player can put pressure on either of these two but I, you know the computer is not that reliable um but i i guess what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to push white out of asia which is difficult like there's a lot of units here but if i could push white out of asia and force white to spawn units over here. That'll put pressure on red or pink. And then hopefully break this stalemate. But no guarantees right now. It's, it's a very difficult situation. Given that um, I don't have a lot of power. I'm the least powerful on this board. And so I, there's not much that I can do to change the board state at this point. Now I, I might have been able to change the board state earlier. You know, Maybe if I went for Europe more aggressively or something. But I intentionally chose a uh, weak continent here and hoping that someone else changes the board state. But so far, it's not looking that great. Red is looking very powerful, up to 67 units now. I'm going to have a forced turn in here, but I get that plus two, so I'm going to get eight units out of it, plus another five, so I'm going to get 13. Like, I'm not falling that far behind. If the, Just watch this game. Like, the longer it goes, like, yes, I'm falling behind, but I will not be that far behind. Meanwhile, see how white's putting this 24 up against this 25? That's going to put pressure on pink. Ah, yes, exactly. Okay, the AI hasn't changed that much since I last played. So as you can see, the white computer player broke into Mexico. And see, I didn't have to do anything. I, 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 and so that just takes experience and time to know, like, when is that going to happen versus, like, when do I need to make something happen? And I'm glad I didn't make something happen because red is getting attacked here. If I was red, by the way, you should have definitely been fortifying Mexico a lot more to prevent the computer from attacking you. Okay. So red's going to fight white for a little bit. That's going to make pink the most powerful player on the board. And pink has shown themselves to be very turtly 
and not willing to ally with me. In fact, Pink has been actively attacking my territories and Pink may see this as an opportunity to take Europe. So we have to keep an eye on Pink here. We can't let Pink get too far ahead in this game. Now, luckily Red still has more units than me. So the ball is a bit in Red's court to stop Pink from winning. And that 14 is there to stop Pink from winning the game. So I don't have to actively do anything to stop Pink from winning. I can just keep going on with my, um, with my objective which is to push white out of Asia. That's been my goal. Keep this nice and buffed so that nobody attacks me. And now I'm going to move my side army towards Afghanistan because that's where my next plus two is. So I'm paying attention to where my, my unit bonuses are. My next one's on Afghanistan. So I'm going to move my army there, sit on that, get that plus two. All right, white re... Oh, sorry, red retakes... Uh, North America and then attacks the computer player. That 24 is technically bigger than the 23 though, so it's possible white attacks that next. I don't think it will, but I don't know the computer logic well enough right now to make a call. Oh, up to 27. Does it attack? No. Oh! Oh! Oh, it does attack! That is crazy! Crazy. Wow, the AI is so aggressive. Like a human player would never do that move because it's just so stupid. <laughs> but anyways, white's down to 24, right? Like just shot themselves in the foot. There's a computer. And then the 31 red. Oh my god. Red is so pissed. Red going from first place, dropping all the way down into 31 units. And now I'm in second. Now this is actually a big problem for me because pink is very much in the lead and could possibly win the game soon. You know you're winning the game when you have more units than everybody else combined, and they're not that far off. Me plus red plus white is a combined 100 and let's say 105 units or so, whereas uh, pink's at 80, and they're knocking out this bottom continent here, and they're going to start attacking red. So pink's going to have two continents. Pink looking very powerful, and red and I need to do something to stop pink from running away with this game. Now, I think... If pink retreats back to Africa and leaves South America open, then red could retake this. The other problem for me is that I wanted to kick the white player out of Asia so that they start spawning down here. But now that white's been kicked out of South America, white's going to start spawning stuff in Asia. And that's going to be a little bit annoying for me. There's nothing I can do to stop pink at this point is the problem. I guess I could slam my 36 to the left, but that's just so hostile. And I don't think it really gets me that much on this board. So I'm going to I'm gonna wait one more turn. I'm going to buff my 41, which will... The reason I'm buffing my 41 instead of my 10 is because I want a massive army that can attack. Right? I have this massive army and I want to make it even bigger so I can slam pink when the time is right. I've got nine units here on Afghanistan. I'm not worried about losing it because the 18 cannot attack through its own territories. Here comes red. Yes, that's so good for us. That is so good for us. Okay, now we just took first place thanks to red. And like I said, we got that big army stacked up that's ready to pounce as soon as the opportunity arises. And I think the opportunity is very close. Remember, you, you're winning the game when you have more units than everybody else combined. And I'm at 56 plus four cards compared to just 60 units over here. So I think I could just kill one of these guys, take their cards and potentially win the game. Now the question is who's easier to kill, red or pink? Now luckily pink makes their move before me so I get to see what they're gonna do. The 12 is unfortunately blocking my 41. Ooh, you hate to see it. And red just rage quit the game. So really it's just me versus pink now because we got two computer players as opponents. So all I need to do is take my 41, kill pink and I win the game. Now, do I need to kill pink right now or can I wait one more turn? That's a good question. You know pink's going to retake Africa. Yes. Now, if I lose 12 units off the bat attacking through... I, I don't want to be attacking the computer player right now, but I, I think I have to to get to pink. Because pink's going to have two continents, maybe... No, nah, not three. That'd be crazy. Pink's going to have two continents. Should I attack left through the 12 or should I go to the right through North America and down? That could be a better option, actually. 
because the 18 can't come to the right because these two blockers. So if I just go up and around to the right, I can just easily retake South America away from pink and then maybe break the eight. Alternatively, I just break, break, kill all this stuff. It's very direct. These are both great options. I'm not really unhappy about either one. I am unhappy about this turn in. It's complete crap. But I need those extra six units. In a head-to-head -head fight, you want to have all those units from that turn in. I mean, I could try and kill red, get the extra card, and maybe get a better turn in out of it, but I think I need to do this turn in. Let's do this turn in. It's not great. Buff this up to 50. I think I'm going to go up and to the right because it's gets me a couple more territories. So let's go this way. Oh, I just realized I could have maybe killed white, but that's not a big deal. I think I want to kill red. Uh, no, I need to focus on pink. Focus, focus on the objective. Kill pink. Okay, now if I go for these other things, it's overkill. I don't need to be doing that. And I know that since pink only has two cards, they can't do a turn in on this turn. So I'm very, very safe right now. So why is it that it's overkill? Because uh, you're guaranteed at least three units per turn, regardless of the situation. And so he's going to get three units next turn. So killing more territories doesn't actually get me anything. That eight is beautifully blocking this 10 from attacking Australia. So yeah, this game looks pretty closed and shut here. All right, everybody, that's going to be it for the video. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the content. If you want to see more Risk, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.